Hi, I'm Chris Apolito, and welcome to the Get Coached Podcast, where I'm documenting my journey from employee to entrepreneur while featuring the coaches that are helping me along the way. Each episode, these coaches provide actionable advice to help me and you, the audience, find more success as entrepreneurs. I invite you to join the journey so we can go and grow together. Welcome to another episode of the Get Coach Podcast. In this episode, I sat down with Stephanie Hess, who is a Fortune 500 beauty director turned self-made entrepreneur, online business strategist, and high vibrational mentor to thousands of women who follow her work online. Stephanie and I talked about a common myth that holds a lot of entrepreneurs back. So please enjoy this conversation with Stephanie Hess. Hi, Stephanie. Hey, Chris. How are you? How's it going? I'm amazing. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for being a guest and welcome to the Get Coach podcast, um, where we interview business coaches like yourself and provide actual advice to entrepreneurs. So I, I always love to start off every episode sharing your story or having you share your story with the audience so they can get a little bit more acquainted with you, your personal journey, and how you got to be where you're currently at. Absolutely. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, So I am from a small town. I'm a country girl at heart. And I went to the big city in Manhattan. And I was really, really thinking that I was going to spend the rest of my career doing PR and professional sports. I then became a global beauty director for a fortune 500 company and life was really good um, until the dreaded B word came into play. And there was just this, this moment where I, I couldn't see my life heading in that direction anymore. And what, I knew that sorry, I was, the B word burnout. Oh, sorry, burnout. <laughs> I skipped right over I was it. Like, <laughs> what, what, what B word? <laughs> my mind went very different places. I was like, baby, oh, I hope yes. that's not a dreaded thing. No. Okay. Bur- burnout. Got yes, it. Im- important clarification. Um, yes. Yeah, so we, you know, we just were, were trying to figure out how, how could I be of greater service and contribute in a bigger way in the, in the world. And so I started to get, become, um, a health coach as I was in the corporate in the corporate role, and I quickly discovered that my passion was was rooted in the business principles, in the marketing, and I I developed such a heart for women with missions, um, building their own businesses. So I just made this natural pivot. I started helping women in my local community build their businesses and monetize their businesses. And so that is what I do now. And it is my greatest joy. Nothing gets me more energized and excited than supporting, um, supporting someone with, with such a connection to their purpose and their unique gifts and, and perspective and helping them to bring it to more people and make a handsome living by doing it. Right. Yeah, that's, it's obviously very noble cause helping people really achieve those dreams that um, they aspire to independence, financial freedom, such. Uh, I want to dig a little bit into the backstory, the, the, cause you were, you were involved in the sports world for how long well, and what, in what kind of capacity? Yeah. So I was studying um, at university. I was working for the local Philly team. So I was involved with the Sixers and the Eagles, and um, I was doing marketing and promotions at the time. What took me to New York was this incredible opportunity to join the Knicks organization in a public relations capacity. So um, I was in that role on an not on and off. It was pretty consistent for about 10 years. So I would come in um, and support game nights and and be involved with the media and with the the beat writers and photographers and all of that. And it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, And then working in beauty was a completely different perspective. It was, you know, a female driven industry and, um, you know, playing with lipsticks actually <laughs> isn't as easy as it sounds. Um, but no less, I am so grateful for both of those really powerful opportunities that 
that gave me this foundation of being able to support other entrepreneurs, business owners, founders, and things like that. Yeah. The, I mean, obviously from the outside looking in, I think a lot of people would have identified uh, where you were at as like, that's success. You're working with the Knicks, you're working with uh, a large uh, cosmetics or beauty company. Um, what would be some of the things that uh, from the inside, what were some of the, the areas that were maybe a little bit more challenging or not in line with what you, your, your real purpose was? Do you remember kind of like how you were feeling and what, why the draw to, to look at things outside of the corporate world? That's such a great question, Chris. I remember so vividly the moment where the mornings getting, getting up when my alarm clock would go off, those mornings got tougher and tougher. Mm. The commute into the office, it, it, it was, and you know, it, it's, I feel privileged to get to say that like, oh, I, I, you know, it was a tough thing going up to this cushy, showing up to this cushy job, but it ultimately came down to this piece where my values were so out of alignment. And I, I really, I couldn't bear to, um, to really work in an environment that wasn't empowering. I couldn't bear to make, make a great paycheck, but still feel like I wasn't, I wasn't contributing in a way that I knew that I really could. So it was kind of this crossroads where it was really just a matter of, of giving myself permission to know that what I stand for and my values that I'm unshakable in are, are, perfect. And now this next chapter was just going to look a lot different than it had for those, those past 10 or so years. Right. Ten, that, yeah. That's I, it's, it's funny. Cause I know there's a, this stigma about like waking up to an alarm clock. I've heard this before. I don't know if maybe it isn't a stigma or not, but I've heard it before where it's like, Oh, I don't want to have to wake up to an alarm clock, but I don't know if it's necessarily the alarm clock that was that that drives people kind of crazy it's more what you're having to go to right and and would you say that was more the case for you or was it the fact that you had to wake up early to go to a job it was more the destination <gasps> not the act of getting up early right it was the destination behind that ding <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah yeah because i think when <laughs> i i know for myself anyways and i think maybe this is the case for a lot of people is if you know if you're getting up early with like that your true purpose or at least what you've identified as your true purpose in in that season of life it makes waking up to an alarm clock a lot easier right or getting up early cuz you're like i'm getting up and i I'm, I'm i've got a mission today i've got i've got things to achieve yes yes and isn't that what living is all about yeah. you know it's like i think culturally we are groomed and taught that you know we we find a job we find a job that pays well and we we go to that job and that's what we do for the rest of our lives and I still talk to so many people that are in jobs that they are absolutely miserable doing. And it breaks my heart because I was there for so long. And, you know, it's just, I think there's this disconnect with, um, you know, realizing that you can actually design your life. You get to make decisions that can support you in a, in, in a, a, a way that is more true and more aligned for you. And I think it's just taking a minute to stop and really question those, those ideas, those rules that we've been programmed and conditioned to just buy into. Right. Yeah. And I always like to preface conversations like this, that we're not trying to like poo poo on <laughs> corporate jobs or anything like that. It's just that it's, it's not the right fit for everybody, right? Sure. But for some people, it's great. Like maybe that is what you, you're motivated to go and perform well for your employer and, and, and elevate yourself within the organization and continue adding value within an organization. Those are all noble things to do. Entrepreneurs tend to, to, as, as, as a stereotype anyways, entrepreneurs tend to want to feel like they're creating something of their own solving problems for other people, right? That at least that's how I feel. Would you, would you agree with that? Or, or do you have a different perspective on that? 
Yeah, you know, I love that you add that because it is so crucial and it's such an important, important point to make. Um, you know, I think that it ultimately comes back to that piece of alignment. I loved my job up until it was no longer aligned mm. for me. And so there are so many people out there who they are meant to be, you know, leading an organization or, or growing within an organization. If that is truly what feels aligned for you, that like rock, rock on with your bad self. So yes, I love that you added that. It's so yeah. important. I, I like what you added there. Just the alignment. It, it, it can be aligned with what you're, what's important to you right now. And, and when it's not, that's when you start uh, having like that self-discovery kind of conversation with yourself as far as like, okay, what is it that I'm not feeling fulfilled about here? And what can I seek out that may provide fulfillment in, in a different season of life? Yes. It's, it's asking the questions. It's, it's being willing to see things differently or, or look at your life in a different way than maybe you've been taught you should look at life. Yeah. Great. I, all right. I think let's, I'd love to now shift over to kind of that, that's your backstory. Let's bring it to where, where you're at right now and what you do um, with your clients in our initial conversation and, and some of the videos I've seen of yours, you, there was a, a, a very common myth that you said that you want to really kind of dispel and help entrepreneurs and your clientele, uh, just get that out of your head because it's, it's not true. Do you mind sharing what that myth is? I would love to. <laughs> it is my, my all time favorite, um, myth to bust. And so in the work that I do, I'm now a business coach, mentor, online strategist, and the, the common challenge that my clients face and come to me with is, I don't know where to find the clients. I don't know how to attract clients. And so when I looked back on the things that, that I did to build my business, it really really came back to this core mindset shift, this core belief that I had to rewire. And it, it's this, you do not need a New York times bestseller. You don't need a, a leading podcast in the top 10 on iTunes. You don't need, um, you know, a hundred testimonials on your website. You don't need a website, a fancy website. You don't need any of thing, any of these things in order to serve and start working with clients and get paid for working with clients. Right. Why do you think that myth exists? Because mm. it, it is a very common one. Um, oh, if only I had an Amazon bestseller, that will start attracting more clients for me. Or if only I had a podcast in the top 10 business section, that's when people will start listening to me and I'll earn more business. Will it help? Probably. But I, I think what you're, you, the message you're trying to deliver is that those are not requirements to get started. Like you can just start and then add those down the road. Is that what kind of the message is? Yes, absolutely. Those things are great to have and they will enhance your brand, but they're not foundational to the work that you're really here to do. And I think that what happens is, and God bless social media, I'm, I'm a, mm. a user myself, but it's, it's kind of created this warped view of what really matters. And so it's so easy. Another thing that I hear all the time um, from my audience and tribe is that, you know, comparisonitis. They're on their feed and they're seeing all of the shiny and all of, you know, all of the fancy um, things that these people, these influencers, these brands, these businesses are doing. And it makes them feel, well, I don't have that. I'm not doing that. Right. So am I, am I really worthy? And it often comes back to that, that word, the, 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 the feeling of worthiness, um, and that's often the block. That's often the piece that keeps people kind of in a cocoon, in a shell, um, you know, withdrawn, not really owning their power and using it to, to serve in a bigger way. Right. Yeah. I like, I like that. That's a, a, a good perspective on it because, um, 
I would say I definitely find myself guilty of that is uh, I use social media in a couple of different ways. One is actually research-based. So if I'm going to create content of value for an, a, the target audience that I'm, I'm looking to work with, what is the kind of content that they're enjoying and that's going to attract them and such. Then I use it in a, in a more negative way, which is looking at the other people that I'm modeling myself after and going, well, man, their content's so polished and great and look at all the views they get and the likes they get. And like, how am I going to get from here to there? And, and that comparison and am I, am I worthy of being able to get that kind of attention and add that kind of value to an audience? Uh, it's a bit of a slippery slope, I think, right? Like social media, as you, as you mentioned, it's important because that's one of the main methods that you're, you're connecting and communicating with your, your tribe, right? Yes. Yeah. So Definitely. there's value there. There's, there's a, there's a purpose for it, but I think we're, we can easily go down the wrong path of, like you said, comparison and, and that more negative mindset. So what would be, do you have maybe advice for somebody who is struggling a little bit with shifting that mindset from using social media as a tool for business versus a, uh, simply consumption and, and feeding more of that, those negative thoughts? Mm, I love the question. And I'm just realizing that there's this common thread in our conversation, because I would give you a similar answer to this as before. Sure. When, when you have absolute alignment and I'll break that down in a bit, but when you feel so rooted and grounded in your why, in what you're here to do, in the gifts, the, the perspective that you know that you're here to bring to the world, it's kind of like everything out here is just noise. And mm -hmm. it has less impact on taking you out of your purpose connection. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's basically, and this is a very common theme with a lot of business coaches, uh, entrepreneurs is the stronger your why and your purpose is the, the, um, it's almost like a fortress in a sense, like it fortifies your character, your soul, your spirit, whatever term it, you, people are comfortable with. But what you're saying is like the stronger your why gets and the more rooted you get into it, then all that other stuff just kind of is like water off a duck's back. It just doesn't affect you anymore. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And to help give clarity to anyone who's listening, I, I love to have people ask themselves this simple question. And it's, if I were given a, a megaphone and I could declare or shout or affirm the one thing that I want people to know if I'm, if I have my megaphone and I'm on a balcony and there are thousands or millions of people in the crowd and I had 60 seconds, what would I need them to know? And that's often your why. Hmm. I, I, Surprisingly, I have not read Simon Sinek's book. <laughs> so start with why. Have you? No, but no. I am such a fan. Yeah, I, I love the concept. I um I feel like that's a book, maybe not necessarily a book I need to read. That's that's almost like uh procrastination in a sense sometimes. But it's it's actually maybe question for you. Do you have an exercise that maybe you yourself do to help you get like refocused on your why when you, when you feel maybe you are going a little off course or things are, 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 I, I guess like just feeling a little bit more challenging, whether it's for yourself or something you do with, with your clients? Yes, absolutely. Whenever I feel that kind of coming on and let's just be honest, we're, we're, we're here having a, a human experience. So there are going to be days, even for the top experts that you see in the world, right? That not every day is going to be win after win. And so I just recently had a little bit of a, a bumpy 
um, bumpy few days where I wasn't as energized as I usually am. And so instead of my old pattern would have been to judge myself for, you know, being in that headspace. What I did was I now know that I just need to double down on my mindset. And so I've built this toolkit over time of things, of resources that I know for me get me most fired up and most connected in back into what I'm doing. And so for your listeners, I would just say, what, who are those people for you? What are those things for you? Is it a book? Is it a meditation? Is it an affirmation? Is it an inspiring app that you have on your phone? Is it someone that you listen to? Is it a podcast? <laughs> um, you know, create your toolkit. And this is really over time, the, the thing, the arsenal that you can turn to daily to really, really kind of nurture that, we'll just say it to be cliche, that millionaire mindset. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Do you, can we, can we talk a little bit about your toolkit? Do you mind sharing? Like what are some of the things that you use personally to help you course crack, stay on track and, and regain that, that mindset that you're looking to maintain? Yeah. So I wish I could say I'm a part of the 5 a.m. club. That will <laughs> never be me. Much respect to all of all of those people. I can get up that early. Um, but for me, I've just, number one is I've taken the pressure off myself to craft my routines or habits or try to try to force them to look or sound like someone else. So what works for me really great now, and this might change, you know, by next season is there's always this, this sacred container that I create for myself every morning. So it could start at 7am. It could start at 8am. Let's say I, I get up, I typically will do a meditation. So five to 10 minutes, and then I'll hop on my yoga mat. I'll do 10 to 15 minutes of stretching and breathing. Then I usually run upstairs, grab my bulletproof coffee, and I'll come back down and I'll get out my journal. And I will either listen to someone that really, really fuels me. Um, I'll just name drop Mark Von Muser is an amazing guide and resource for me. Um, I just really connect with his energy. So again, you know, find that person for you. But every time I can listen to him, I am constantly back into that space of owning my gifts and being of service. And um, I like to say that we all have a lower self and a higher self. And so the, my, my responsibility is to really shift into my higher self as much of the time as I can. Right. And so, because I know that my higher self, um, let's just say my Sasha fears for any Beyonce fans is, is this powerful leader and mentor and guide who can help women transform their lives and businesses. That's, that's the woman that I want to spend most of my time in. So it's all of the work that I do each morning, even if it's 30 minutes of, of a routine or, or, or habits, that's what allows me to constantly be kind of in a higher vibrational state and my, my version of Sasha Fierce. Right. Right. There's a book, um, on, on kind of on this topic called alter ego. Mm -hmm. Can't remember the name of the the author now, but he talks about having almost like creating this higher level persona of your, yourself. So in the the premise, I haven't read it, but I, I listened to a podcast where he kind of explained it. Is that think of it as like you yourself are are maybe like Clark Kent, but then when you need to get to that next level, push through something uncomfortable, um, just execute on on that higher level you just call upon superman right and and you do yes. it and uh over time that identity starts kind of overlapping a little bit where yes there's superman and clark kemp but really at the end of the day they're one in the same right um so yeah i like that that's that's cool i i'm a big fan of morning routines uh my my morning routines were quite defined for a little while 
Uh, and then about five months ago, things changed a lot <laughs> when, when my son arrived yes. uh, and, and it's like slowly figuring that out. And, uh, but that's the thing is like, it's, it's all about figuring out. And I like what you said. It's like, everybody has their own toolkit or, or systems or routines that are going to prime them for having a great day. And maybe you don't have an hour to do it, but find out what's that one thing that is going to have the most uh, positive impact on you. So for you, maybe it would be meditation or the yoga or it's the journaling uh, or the bulletproof coffee, which I think we should explain real quick to the audience who is not familiar with bulletproof coffee, what that actually is. Um, do you want to share or, or should I? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my favorite brand. So bulletproof is a brand that was, um, founded by Dave Asprey. He is this amazing man that studies human potential, human optimization. Anyway, he wanted to bring to the market, a brand of coffee that is free of mycotoxins and, and different other things commonly found in coffee. And so he's just built this line of amazing products, but he's known for his theory and his perspective on incorporating healthy fats and this idea of, if you haven't heard of Bulletproof, I'm sure maybe you've heard about the whole oil and butter in your coffee craze. And so that's really where this comes from. And so I've found that my body doesn't really metabolize coffee that well. So Bulletproof for me works amazing because I don't ever get that like off the wall jittery feel. And I know that it's because of that balance of, of the, the fats with um, the fats and the oil with, with the coffee. It's, it's amazing. I personally love the, the dark mocha cold brew with collagen protein. That's my jam every morning. Okay. All right. I, yeah, I was doing the bulletproof coffee thing, uh, for quite some time. Uh, and that was actually when I, I, I was going more that route of like the time restricted fasting, bulletproof coffee, becoming more fat adapted. And I went from, uh, 215 pounds down to 175 and was just like full of energy. It was great. And then, <laughs> I was somewhat persuaded to, well, you're getting a little skinny and uh, are you sure you want to lose more weight? And I'm like, I don't think I'm going to lose more weight. I'm pretty sure I'm kind of like where I'm going to be. If I'm going to gain weight, it's probably going to be mainly muscle. Uh, and then I was influenced as far as if you want to gain muscle, don't you need more calories, more protein, and maybe even some carbs? I was like, well, okay. So I started reintroducing carbs. Uh, gained a little bit of weight, which was fine. I was, I felt like I was at a healthy weight at that point. It was like 185, almost 190. Um, and then <laughs> not my son's fault, but just life changes a lot when your wife's pregnant and then a son, uh, a new child comes. So I, I'm like, I'm not quite 215 again, but I'm almost up there. And, uh, it's really funny because it's just like, I felt way better when I was 175 compared to where I'm at right now. I was sleeping better um, and, and whatnot. So I'm definitely going to try and get back into that. One lesson, though, I will share because I went through this real quick. Um, if you're going to go the path of, of fat uh, as a, a high source of calories for you, you cannot have too much carbs in your diet. Two reasons for it. You'll gain a ton of weight because your body's almost like confused as far as like what fuel source should I be going after? Uh, but it actually can cause some cramping in your, your, uh, your stomach area through it's like your gallbladder or something like that. So just caution to yourself, Stephanie, and, and anybody who's, who's looking to do it, it's one or the other. You can't really have high amounts of both. It, it can cause some issues. I learned mm. that through experience. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a uh, bit of a different direction, but I was wondering if, uh, you know what, I think that that was a good conversation. I really like it. It actually went completely different than where I was kind of thinking uh, we would go, but I really enjoyed the conversation. I thought there was some great insight, some great perspective shared by yourself as far as like how to kind of prime the day and get yourself on track. Uh, and if you're feeling a little derailed, like what to do. 
So, and I, and you kind of shared it earlier, but I was wondering if you wanted to maybe, or if there was something different, but I like to wrap up every episode with, you know, what's that one piece of uh, advice or that next step that you would suggest the audience takes when it comes to what we just finished talking about? Mm. So the core of my work is helping people get into client attracting mode and money making mode. And so what I will say is you can hop over to my website, stephaniehascoaching.com, anyone who's listening, and there is a client creation framework video on my site. And so what I wanted to make sure that everyone, everyone got, even if the five part, like you'll, you'll hear the five parts, but, and this actually is a great way to, to kind of cap what we were talking about. There's one thing that. I, I find that most coaches and most people in business are not really prioritizing. And, and in my opinion, it is the foundation of what we do. And so the five parts of the framework, it's clarity, attract, nurture, offer, and elevate. The nurturing part, if there is one thing that you can, can hit the ground running and do and focus on, in your business, and no matter if you're a solopreneur or if, you, if you're building a culture, if you have a team, it's focusing on the nurture. There are so many business owners out there that aren't really dating their customers. They're trying to jump right in bed with them. And mm. I hope I can say that here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. I think we're, and, all, we're all adults here. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I would love for you to think about right now, where, where am I not nurturing the relationships with prospects, with, with clients? Where am I not following through? Where am I not loving on my people? I think that it's so easy and, and I'm sure you can think of um, the messages that, that come to you on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, the messages that are so driven by the other person wanting to get something from you. And so I'd love for you to just flip that model on its head instead of giving, how can I'm, I'm sorry, instead of taking or, or trying to get something, how can you come from a place of giving. And this is really where the nurturing piece comes into play. Um, I'm not sure of the exact stats right now, but as far as email marketing, people are now sitting on email lists longer than ever before. I have a mentor that people tend to buy after being on her list for up to a year. So, mm. and this is especially, um, crucial if you are servicing or serving the millennial generation where they really value experience, high touch and service. And they, they want to feel your authenticity and they want to, to trust you ultimately. So nurturing is, is a part of the business, um, that you cannot neglect. I would put that front and center and just come up with a couple different ways that are unique to you. That can be your signature. And, you know, really, really cool ways that you can start giving more and taking less and, and, and allowing the relationships to evolve over right. time. I like that a lot. Thank you for sharing. There's a book that I've mentioned a couple of times on the podcast that talks a lot about that called The Go-Giver by Bob Berg. Um, oh. So anybody who's listened to the podcast a few times has heard me mention that. Uh, I will, I highly recommend it. So, uh, yep, that was great. I really appreciate it. That was good conversation, great advice. So if, if anybody listening wanted to connect with you or learn more about you, Stephanie, what, what would be the best place for them to, uh, go online? Head over to stephaniehascoaching.com. You can get a, there's a free 15 or 17 minute video where I break down the client, the five part client creation framework. And right underneath there, there's an option for you to book a complimentary discovery call with me. If you feel called to do that, would love to talk to you. Great. That was awesome. Thanks for, uh, for being a guest and having fantastic conversation and, and just sharing great advice with the audience. It was such a pleasure. I'm such a fan of what you're doing. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye.
Thanks for listening to the Get Coach Podcast. If you're looking for more information, you can head over to our website, which is getcoachedpodcast.com. You'll find the show notes for this and every other episode there. And if getting actionable advice every week from professional coaches is something you want more of, then make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes.